No, I'm kind of with Adam on this. I mean, these numbers, they're always a little wonky, right? From month to month. And he had a fantastic collection of Nintendo games behind him. I wish I had the same background, but that's neither here nor, neither here nor there. But I do think that, you know, the bottom line is like, look, things are getting better. Uh, unemployment has obviously come down a lot. The only concern in that number, in my opinion, is that participation rate, right? The fact that we didn't add that many jobs, but we brought the unemployment number down to 4.2%. And I think the bigger concern here, Zach, is that you've got a lot of people that aren't going to return to the labor force. I mean, you have a lot of baby boomers that decided just to retire, you know, during the pandemic. And, you know, we really have a population that's not growing that quickly. So I think this labor shortage issue is going to be a problem for a long time. I think hiring will continue. I think these numbers will be wonky month to month. But I think what you have to worry about here more than anything is we're just not going to have enough workers to fill all the jobs because the economy is running hot. I guess maybe, and obviously, you know, when we talk about uh, wage growth here, that's different if you're dealing with people on the high end uh, of incomes versus uh, people on the low end. Obviously, you're not going to replace one with the other. But I mean, when you look at maybe what it all means right now, when you back up and think about the volatility we've seen in the market right now, it's a strange time. I think a lot of people have been reacting to the way that the Fed kind of shifted their accommodative stance to a bit of more hawkish tune. Strange time to be doing so, given kind of uh, the questions we still have around Omicron. I mean, uh, you've given us advice in the past around uh, staying the course here. Are you still in that camp, given the fact that we've seen some pretty big sell-off? Well, you know, it's, it's hard being right all, every time, Zach. And this time, I'm going to put my neck out there again and say, yes, I think this is absolutely a buying opportunity. Because, I mean, look, when you we strip away the news and the headlines right now, I mean, nothing's really changed that much. We just got through the Delta variant. So we already know what different variants look like. We know that it slows up supply chains a little bit. But, I mean, the reality of it is, look at last quarter. Look how well CEOs, CFOs were able to manage their companies, you know, through supply chain issues. And we had 40% profits year over year. That's insane, right? So I, I think, you know, economy is going to continue to grow. We've been dealing with this uh, pandemic now for nearly two years. We've gotten better at dealing with it. You're seeing TSA numbers go up at the airport. You're seeing more people travel again, you know, go on vacations. So, you know, I think the bottom line is if you look at, if we kind of zoom out here a little bit, things are going to continue to get better. They are getting better. And, you know, any dip in the market that we've seen this year, because there's so much liquidity out there, so much money has been printed, is going to keep funneling its way into the market, buying these dips, because a lot of people are still sitting in cash because they didn't take my advice when I was on your show before, Zach, which is just wrong. So <laughs> I, I do think that's the bottom line here is money's going to continue to funnel in this market. Take advantage of the dip. You're not getting many of them. And we know every dip's been bought here. That trend's going to continue. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You're, you're a value guy. You've obviously advocated for a lot of the cyclical names that we cover here on the show. Uh, and uh, interesting to see Charlie Munger, right? Warren Buffett's uh, right-hand man here coming out and talking about how crazy the market is right now uh, relative to the dot-com era and saying that some of these valuations, you know, might not be as high as what we saw back then, but still a crazy time. Uh, I mean, when you listen to that, is, is that maybe uh, true to maybe what sectors you lean in on here? Because we have seen a lot of those names really shellacked the last few weeks, obviously a lot of travel concerns, so maybe no surprise that airlines would be down. But are you still kind of leaning in on those names in this recovery or broadening out maybe into some of those other sectors? Yeah, no, I, I think the cyclical trade is going to be more sensitive. So anytime you get something like this Omicron uh, variant of the virus where it's going to slow up economic growth in the short term, your cyclical names are going to take the big hit. But again, we want to win the war here, not the battle. The bigger picture is the economy is getting better. You know, even oil prices took a shellacking last week. Oil's still up like 50 percent for the year, right? Financials are still up over 30 percent for the year, dramatically outperforming the overall market. So that cyclical trade is the long game because things are going to continue to get better. But I agree with Charlie Munger here, uh, Char Charlie Munger here, uh, and I said this on my podcast, Pain Points of Wealth, this past week, one of the fastest growing podcasts in the country, is that there are pockets of bubbles being formed. And I agree with them 100%. I've said it on your show, I've said it on all the major outlets, that, that this whole Bitcoin thing, this whole cryptocurrency is one of the biggest bubbles ever. And to put it in perspective, whoa, whoa. right, if you look at all, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying, you know, now we're getting into bubble territory here on crypto. It's actually held up better than the markets as of late, but I'd like to hear the point. Well, we do have a minor 20% correction right in the last two, three weeks. But I think the bigger picture there is, and I think you can go higher here, by the way, because I think there's still too much money that can funnel into this market. But it's just becoming a bigger and bigger casino, right? At the end of the day, we're not using it for that much more commercial use. 
It's just more people speculating. And I think it's very analogous to when the tech bubble burst or you go back to the housing bubble, where it's just like pervading society now, like everybody's involved. Um, and the reason for owning it don't make a lot of sense. Uh, because really, I mean, it's not a great store value of money, as we know. It's extremely volatile. Um, it's fake scarcity. <laughs> you know, it's not like gold that has real scarcity. And it's compared to gold, which we know is a long term, a horrible investment. So I do think eventually that bubble is going to burst. It's going to be ugly. You know, the market cap is somewhere over $2 trillion. To put that in perspective, when the dot com bubble burst, those dot com stocks were worth like a half a billion dollars. So, you know, inflation adjusted, that's like a trillion dollars in today's dollars. Most of those stocks became worthless. Even Amazon went down 80, 90% when the tech bubble burst, and it took you like 14 years to get back on your money. So I do think that bubbles are there. They're pervasive right now. And the smart money here is you can get out early. It's better to be early than late and get into some of those cyclical names, which are selling off right now. Diversify your port portfolio, protect yourself, because eventually the music's going to stop. And when it does, no one's going to tell you ahead of time.